I just compressed eight hours of building an entire web app using convex and cloud code, mainly to prove that you can build your own idea as well, just by knowing some core web dev concepts. The final result was this MVP that I really want to test in the next couple weeks. I figured that the best products are the one that you use and that you need. And then along the way, you find more people that need that. And then you actually transform that into a scalable product. So this is the MVP for tubefunnel.app. It allows me to integrate all of my videos. And once they are synced in here, I can click on manage links, head over to this manage links panel, create one more link in here based on a specific group. So for example, I want a link for a sponsorships group inside of the sponsorships. I have different links. So let's say that one of my sponsors is convex. I'd click on the comics link and then for a custom title, just so I keep track of this, uh, let's say video link. As soon as I hit create link, it creates this link up here for me down here. You can find that as well. The title right here. As soon as I click on copy, I can then open another tab, place in that link, hit enter and be redirected over to convex.dev. This axis is then registered back in my app as soon as I click on view stats. So in this page, you get a full analysis of that link, the total clicks, unique visitors, returning rate, operating systems, and even where that click came from. So since I'm in Brazil, that was correctly registered. For now, it just looks like a bit.ly clone, but you'll see along the video that I'm trying to make this more focused on YouTube. And eventually, because how this is sorted through groups and campaigns, we will be able to track the entire funnel and understand which videos get more views. And based on those views, what is the percentage of clicks that actually only then converts into money. This is just part one of the product build. I'll be improving it and sharing the results here on the channel. So make sure to like and subscribe so that you get notified whenever the second comes out. Today, I'll go through each step I took to build this from zero to deployment using Convex, setting up Stripe payments, Google authentication, designing the app, handling the YouTube API, and much more. Since this is really just an overview of how you can do the same to build your own app, I gathered all of the prompts sent through Cloud Code in a Notion document that you can access in the description below. By the way, at the top right corner, I've placed a timer for you to track how long it took for me to get to that specific part of the project. The very first part of building this project was research. I spent about a half an hour on this. And to do that, I really enjoy writing out my ideas inside of Xcolidraw. It helps me visualize the whole project. I first drew a simple connection between YouTube and monetization, where I earned from a few streams and wanted to know exactly how much traffic each one was getting. After drawing down my problem, I started researching projects that might already be doing this. I found out most apps don't focus on YouTube as the primary top of funnel, and they have so much customization that it feels like you have more work setting them up than actually freeing your time. I also felt like there was nothing built specifically for solopreneurs. People like me, whose main focus with YouTube is just pushing out better content and using a really simple funnel. I wanted to track these link clicks as fast as possible, then understand how many of a video's views are converting clicks. Later, I wanted to know how many of those clicks result in a sale. And from that, what type of product my audience is most interested in. All this resulted in a huge conversation with ChatGPT. I mean, I like using GPT-5 to research the market as well as to understand some technical parts that I might not be remembering. I hadn't used Convex for a while. So having ChatGPT explain how the integration works was a good move. Yet I still wanted to prove that you could build a lot just by providing the right context to the LLM. But the problem for me was that I didn't know myself what was the right context to fetch for. And I really didn't want to first learn and build manually with Convex and only then use AI. Since I mean, if you're a builder, you might understand this. You just want to build it. And usually my approach with this is having AI build, but actually stay in touch with every step along the way so that I can learn that stack with the AI building my app. So instead of just feeding it just a specific context, which is the right approach to do, since I didn't know what was that specific context, I give it access to basically all of the most important context I could find. Inside of the convex documentation, they show you a convex underline rules.txt, which you can feed over to the LLMs and have it understand how convex works. Another pretty nice context I found to add was the convex MCP that gives it access to all of these tools. My very first prompt was asking for the basics of a SaaS. Login page, sign up, pricing page, and more. At this early stage, it's really just generic features. Stripe integration was added too, as well as Google authentication and a special component library called Neobrutalism Components. Eventually, everything was working along with Convex. Just this part took me almost four hours to build, and I made sure to save this branch of the project so that I would have a starter kit next time. 
I also want to help you start your project as fast as possible, skipping the foundational web app setup and going straight to the core features. So you can find the link to this repository down in the description. Now for the fun part. I went back to my conversation with ChatGPT and started writing my prompts. When using Convex, keep in mind that it'll be your main backend. The way you send events to it while working locally is by running a terminal with npx convex dev. As soon as Cloud Code finishes implementing something, head over to that terminal and check if all went right. Sometimes you'll see errors like these, which 90% of the time are solved with simple copy and paste. This gives Cloud Code the context it needs to fix whatever error you got from convex. By 4 hours and 34 minutes, I had the link generation done. I could now access a generated link and it would be tracked successfully all the information I needed, total clicks, traffic sources, browser, return rate, and more. Four minutes later, I started implementing the YouTube integration, as this app should allow users to bring in their channel data. And to do that, we need to handle the YouTube API. Now, just to note that I am used to using Prisma along with a Postgres database. Every time I would implement anything that would change the database, I would almost always think, oh my God, here we go again. And I don't even know if it's because of the way that Cloud Code handles Prisma migrations and stuff, but it just took longer to implement those features. While in Convex, it felt seamless. I didn't get annoyed dealing with the database at all. Things just worked. The only thing about Convex that really got me frequently stuck was their environment variable. Since our backend is actually running from Convex, backend EVs need to be sent over to Convex. I wasn't really used to that, so I'd lose about five minutes chasing an error only to realize I'd forgotten about it. But that's just honestly skill issues on my end. Eventually, I was done with the YouTube implementation. Now users could go in, register their YouTube channel, and sync their videos. I also wanted to add a feature where it would find all the description links and replace them with trackable ones. But I noticed that that would require the force SSL scope from YouTube API. That makes users see the message where they allow an app to see, edit, and permanently delete their YouTube videos. I mean, I personally wouldn't toggle that option on for a new app. So I just preferred removing it, leaving only the option to view your YouTube account. At this point, I was about five hours straight in project and was starting to feel like I was using AI for absolutely everything and being really an NPC. So this was time to stop. I came back to the project some days later and immediately went back to my notes in Xcolidraw to figure out the best approach for registering the links. I mean, why would someone use my app if they could go for Bitly? So I started writing and rewriting each part of the app. Some initial ideas I'd throw away and I'd also start prioritizing what I needed done for the MVP. I came to the conclusion that links fall into specific groups. They're either for sponsorships, affiliates, lead magnets, or other types. Inside each group, we have specific campaigns. So if I made a video promoting Hostinger, I'd have that unique Hostinger campaign that can have multiple links, one for each video. This way I'd know exactly the traffic from the overall group, from the campaign, and from each specific link. I also want to eventually add an ads revenue tracker and a lead magnet feature, but preferred to prioritize normal links for now. Writing everything down and trying to visualize how the app will work for the end user already helps a lot but I'll also be testing the app myself and will likely find improvements along the way. I guess that's the right approach for building something. While rewatching myself, I noticed that 30 minutes were spent just looking at my notes, reviewing the current state of the app and writing everything down in prompt. Even so, I didn't just ask Claude to build everything for me immediately. I asked it to plan everything based on the project's context and then only then report back any question. This led me to a 50 minute back and forth conversation until I finally got it building the features. So overall, it took me about an hour to actually get Claude code building for me. And that's where I get really annoyed with some X posts where people are complaining about AI not coding the way they want it to. Most of the times I read those complaints, I just feel like it's really skill issues. After six hours and 26 minutes of building the app, it had all the features that I'd be happy to test for my own channel. I could now generate links based on a given video and a group. The whole conversation with Cloud Code helped me understand why it was better to just generate links like these and how I'd make that work with another domain. To deploy it, we need to ensure the project builds successfully. So what I like to do is just have Cloud Code build it and fix the issues, even the warnings, until everything is ready. This took around 10 minutes, but as soon as it was done, I remembered I'd have to deploy inside of Convex as well. So I naturally asked Claude to help me with that. And initially it just made me lose time by setting up some of the environment variables, like generating the JWT token manually. But eventually I learned that deploying things in Convex is as easy as two commands. 
npx convex deploy, which will send your schemas, config, well, basically everything from dev to your production server. And then the other command was this one. It guides you through some of the environment variables needed for convex. If I've known about this command before, I probably would have saved around 20 minutes. Now my project was running just fine. I synced some YouTube videos and created a link, but I noticed it wasn't really tracking my location. So I gave the right context to cloud code that I was using EasyPanel and all, and then I remembered I need to use Cloudflare's proxy to make it work. After that, it just tracked my location perfectly. The app isn't done yet, but creating all this took me around eight hours without initially not even knowing how to use Convex. The next steps that I'll probably tackle in the second video are to add YouTube monetization, add the lead magnet feature, add a visual funnel interface to check everything, and also to add a landing page. Honestly, I'll keep up with these videos as long as this one gets a nice reach and feels like a voiceover build that actually helps you guys. So leave a like, and if you have any suggestions on how to improve these style of videos, please let me know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.